the upcoming release of Affinity Designer, Affinity Photo and Affinity Publisher version 2.4 has got some really nice features in it. What I'd like to do in the next few minutes is just give you a quick look at some of those features and we'll work our way through them and see what they are. Now I've got a list here coming up. If you're not part of the beta program, just hang on because I'm sure the release will be later this year. Now what we've got are layer states added to Affinity Designer, DWG and DFX export added, set selection box, double click or tap to switch from node to move tool, file name available as variable, ability to lock insertion targets, space modifier to, for lock children, space horizontal and vertical, size and rotate objects to the same, and 32-bit recording. Now let's have a look at the first of these shall we? And that is the layer states. There are many more additions to version 2.4 and 2.3 for that matter so if you're still using version 1 you really need to upgrade. But uh, let's have a look at this. The first of the list is the layer states. Now that's another panel that's available over here. There's layers and I've got it moved out at the moment so we can see it easily. To enable this you go to window and select states and that will bring up the states panel. Now in the states panel you can have queries and captured states. And I won't go through the act of setting them up here but you can see here that I've got SP1 and SP2 a green tagged CH1 and CH2 are red, JP1 and 2 are blue, and EN1 and 2 are, well it's a yellowy colour, a bit off yellow really. Those two are selected there because that's the most recent query that I've set up. Now to see what a query is you use the little arrow key and select that. Now I don't want to search, a query is a search, I don't want to search for layer types, I want to search for the layer tag, and the layer tag in this case is red. So I've ticked that. No other adjustments, no layer names, and you can use regular expressions, and show and hide the others. Now, this appears to have a little glitch in it at the moment, but I'm sure it'll be fixed. But when you go to that, you can hide that state. Now, the captured states here. That's the red states, the green states, the blue states and the yellow states. And they all have various options here and here. I don't know if it, oh, there we go, apply, update and mask. So if you make a change here, you can apply this one and it goes to there. But what I do up here, go to the red state click on that one and you can see it's highlight those two layers there. Which are those two layers there? Now I can expand those layers and within that I have the other things that I have there. So that one there, CH1, that has the word designer, affinity designer, but just designer in Chinese. But they're off at the moment. Now what I'd, ideally I'd like is for when it finds them all to highlight all of those layers so that all of the layers show in their entirety. But it certainly if you've got thousands of layers this makes it really easy to find because you can search for them and show them there. Now that's a document wide scope or artboard wide scope or selection. Okay, so that's the first one. Now I won't go into how to use these at the moment or how to set them up, but you can see immediately that that's very useful. So let's find the lowest of those. That's the yellow one and we'll click on that and apply those. There's the eye, the little eye there, so you can see which ones are alive. That's the yellow one, the yellow one there, apply and there we go. That's the English level. Now I can go and enable that. There we go over on the left hand side, designer. Let's hide that for the moment. That's all there is to that one. Isn't that's really useful. 
for people who have multiple designs over multiple pages over dozens even hundreds in some cases of artboards that just highlights the ones that you're using okay the first option was layer states now this second um, option is now available in 2.4 when it's finally released Affinity Designer now supports both DWG and DXF, available in Windows, Mac OS and the iPad. The first one, Layer States, applied to Windows and Mac OS only. Now this is available from both File Export and the Export Persona. It's important to note that both these file formats are primarily concerned with vector outline data, with limited support for many of the features Affinity offers. However, it's been a heavily requested feature, particularly as it means outlines created in Affinity can be easily exported and consumed in various CAD applications, as well as utilities for things such as vinyl cutters, plotters, and CNC tools. As an example of using DWG files, I've loaded in some sample DWG files that I obtained from on the internet at this location here. And they've got some sample files there you can play with. Now what I've done is load that in. I've got a couple more. Let's see if I can open one. Some open without problems. There's a 3D one. Let's see if the 3D one opens. You've got that. There were issues, unsupported entities detected during import. Well, that's all right, lots of instances. Let's see what it results in. And there you go. Now you've got lots of images there, but you can see that using these between, um, between applications, maybe, let me get that camera right. Let's not try a 3D one. The one we've got already, architectural example. There's one there. What other ones did we have on that? Mechanical and annotative. That's that one there. Let's see what we get with that one. Okay, there were issues, but that one's not too bad. That's a good one. We're not confusing it with 3D variables. Now, what can you do with that? Obviously, we can convert it to Affinity. Now, that's that's pretty good as a um, SVG file on its own, but we're just going to export this to 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 export that to preserve vectors all the different options you've got there we'll export that and I'll call it mechanical and annotations 2 so it doesn't actually override the one that's there easy as now let's take that because this means you can get a DWG file and export it as an SVG file. Generating the preview, very good. Export, now that will be in pictures but it will be an SVG file. Let's open it and see what we ended up with. Open this There's mechanical and annotative. There's the one with, that's exported by Affinity. There's the SVG exported by Affinity. Too simple. There's all your vectors for that one there. That's pretty neat. Okay, that's all there is to DWG and DXF export. Let's pause that there and carry on. Now this option 
is very simple. It's to set a selection box. Now as normal we've got this here selected and you can see it conforms to the shape of the object that's been tilted slightly. Now we can go up to cycle the selection and we can cycle the selection box to that so that we can move it around and do something with it. That's fairly standard but what we've now got as well is set selection box that we can set that to a permanent. You can see now it's quite a, a much more heavy duty um, alignment with the rest of the page. Now that's set. If I go over here and come back to it, there we go, set selection box. It's now a permanent feature. And of course you can do what you like with that, move it around, that's centered. And you could in fact rotate that even further off the axis. But we don't want to do that. We want to leave that, set that back to zero. Oh, went too far. I could do that in the Transform Studio and make it, there we go, right on zero. But I can go down here, I could add another layer, I could come back to that one, and by selecting that, it's still in the same place. Very nice. So, what was that? Cycle selection box and set selection box. A lovely addition. Okay, this one is part of the export persona for Photo and Designer on all platforms. Now let's have a look. It's more complex than you might think or as simple as you think. It just means that if you click on path in the export persona and you can see what's happening there. Slices, batch builder none, export preset, retina PNG and the path. I want to add the name of the document and the file name of the document. The name of the document is just the name. The file name of the document is the document name plus the file type added to that. And the name of the slice is the slice name. So you can give those individual names. The name of the document and the file name of the document. Click done and it's ready to go. And there's all the rest of it. The stuff that you're familiar with, I'm sure, if you're using the export persona. It's a fairly simple one, that one. To show you a quick example of this, you can see that I've modified this slightly. I've typed in the word SVG boy. And I'll change it to SVG boy cartoon. doesn't alter these things here, but the path component it becomes part of the file name of the document and the name of the document. So when I click done there, and you'll see I've now got SVG boy cartoon there, that kind of gets locked in there. Now when I go down to export slices, you can see I started out with SVG boy there, so let's not go to that one again. We'll just export it, and there it goes. Now I'll have a look down here and we'll go to SVG boy but and that's it cartoon boy which is the name of the file itself and you can see because I entered that path there SVG boy cartoon it's now back there, SVG boy cartoon, it becomes part of the file name, but it doesn't alter that. So it's still cartoon boy, which is still cartoon boy, so it doesn't actually get lost. And they, of course, are, if you're familiar with it, um, iOS, iPhone, iPad um, images, PNG format. Okay, that's a little more detail to that one. Now we've had a look at the first five options and there's only five left but these are not used very often and if you use them you'll really love them because they've all been set in there. So when you get to them have a look at them 
and like everything with Affinity, experiment. Learn how these different things work. Now, I hope you've enjoyed this and I'll leave you to the rest of it and you can explore it at your leisure. Go ahead. Make my day. Subscribe.